Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about deceiving and good code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the most deceiving thing about writing good quality software? And the short answer is that sometimes you should write Wor <laughs> worse code than you think that you can to write better code than you realize. Let me explain, because that sounded a little bit kung fu -y or mystical and sure, I'm a little bit mystical, but I'm not that mystical. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that the problem with focusing overly on trying to write good software is that you can't see the you can't see the uh, you, you can't see the woods for the trees. It you you focus so much on trying to solve a problem, and usually what that leads to is that you start going from solving the actual problem to solving a theoretical problem. What I mean by that is just that I've seen it happen so many times because this is the thing about good software. Good software isn't just clean code for the moment that does something specific. It's also code that will grow, that will scale. It's also code that will develop into something even more powerful and more useful. And usually a lot of people make the connection between good software and generic software. And that's the thing. That's the deceiving part. The deceiving part is that a lot of us developers, we get to this point when we get a little bit secured in, secure in our way of working, we start to think that if I can write code that is reusable and it's fast in, uh, has fast executions and it, and it scales, then it's good software. And when we start thinking in those terms, and this happens, to a lot of people. We start thinking about not, uh, we, we start forgetting about the problem that we are solving right here, right now. And we start thinking about, all right, so if the scope of this feature changes, if it becomes this more complicated thing, how will my code adapt to those changes? And when you start thinking in this, in this way, you have stopped focusing on solving the problem that you're trying to solve. And now you're solving a theoretical problem. Now you're finding a solution that will work for the thing that you're doing today and the thing that you might be doing tomorrow or even worse, next year. You don't even know. These things have not occurred yet. They have not happened. You don't know, but you're solving them right now because you want to write really good software. And as I said, good software, that's about scalability, right? Reusability, generic solutions that can, that do one thing and do one thing really, really well. And so many times I've seen this happen to so many developers where they have created this theoretical, theoretical solution that is great in a, the in a theoretical manner. So in theory, yes, it's great. We don't have the problem, but in theory, yes. And then the day after, something unexpected happens. And the thing that happens is that the feature, as they predicted, developed. It, there was a new set of requirements that came in. But it wasn't the requirements that they thought. So their genius scalable solution didn't account for this new development. And now we're actually forced to consider a new way of developing this feature so that it will fit the use case that we actually have. And now we're in a worse situation. We are in a really, really big pickle, p -p pickle, because we have now a more complicated solution that needs to somehow work with this new requirement that was never ever on the roadmap on when we actually built it. And depending on how much extra fluff or extra th like uh, grace, call it whatever you want, we've added to the original specification, we might find ourselves in a situation where this is actually very hard. And now we try to shim in somehow this new requirement into our graceful solution. And we do that because the amount of effort it would take 
to do the thing, uh, to throw away all this extra new nice, like all this generic super code, because it basically what it comes down to is that if we if we want to 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 support this new feature, we're going to have to throw away all that extra fluff code and then practically rebuild the whole thing so that it fits for the old use case and for the new one. And we just don't want to do that. Or the person who, who built this thing is so mentally invested in the solution that they're going to go, well, no, 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 I did not make a mistake here. Uh, this is absolutely, I was thinking about this. Uh, let me just think about it a few minutes and then it's going to work. Because I designed this thing to be reusable and generic and extensible. I did, I swear. And then they try to shim it in and it becomes this awkward solution. And then we finally make that work. And then the next day comes along and a new requirement comes in that was also unpredicted and wasn't really the thing that we thought was going to happen. And here we are again. And we can continue telling ourselves that this is a good solution and keep on hacking things together until it's such a god-awful mess that everybody complains about using it. And that's the deceiving part of, about good software. If you th when you write good software, if you go in with the intention, at least sometimes, of writing the best code possible, you always run the risk of playing a mental trick on yourself. And the mental trick is that you go from trying to solve the problem at hand to solving a theoretical problem that you might have tomorrow. And unless you are truly a master programmer or you are so in tune with your product and your stakeholders and so forth, so that you really know that this is gonna happen. You can't know, but you can be really certain. You shouldn't do this. It's like, stack, it's, like in, it's like an investment. If you're a good investor, you will be able to make an investment just, a few, just before, like right before it starts, your stock is, starts taking off, or in this case, a new feature comes in and you need to actually build this thing. So if you are good at this stuff, you can do it, and that's absolutely great. But if you're not, you're actually going to put your code base in a much worse situation. One of the worst things that I know of is when I see people write super solutions to problems that they, do, they don't have. And I, can already, I, can, I already know that we are going to very quickly get into a situation where this perfect solution for this specific sort of problem and all the things that we think are going to happen today is going to suck so bad in six months. And usually in six months, something comes along, which is fairly normal, and all of this stuff starts, starts becoming legacy. And here we are, yet again, we've created actually bad code when we intended to write really good software, really good code. And it all came down to one single thing, and that is that we started trying to write good code for the sake of good code, focusing more on the solution than the problem that we were solving. So what I want you to take away from this is that the deceiving part about writing good software is that when you try to write really good software, it's very hard to determine when you actually have software that is good enough, that is perfect for the problem that you are solving, and when to stop. When do you stop trying to make that solution the best thing ever? Because if you continue for long enough, you go further and further away from the problem that you have, and then you meet, reach that magical cut point where if you take it any further, you're no longer working on the problem that you have, but rather a theoretical problem that you may have in the future. And when you go down that road, that's when you actually turn good code into really bad code, potentially. Have a great day.